Okay, Bud Mormon here again. I'm uh, in the process of building a spark gap tesla coil, which is where I should have started probably in my endeavors to figure out tesla coiling, but I worked on it backwards. So I have all four now, all four that I know of. Maybe there's something different that somebody else could try on me, but the only four that I know is we have a vacuum tube tesla coil, which you've seen in my other videos. I have a solid state tesla coil, which works off 110 volt low voltage at around 300, 400 volt. And then I have a, over here, I have a big rotary spark gap tesla coil, which uses a rotary distributor, if you will, to fire this spark. And then I am building this tesla coil right here. This is a regular spark gap tesla coil. I'm going to st stand next to it so you can see how big this thing is. Now, now it's three feet off the floor, okay? As you can see by my waist down here, it's not very tall. It's going to be maybe five, four, five feet tall when I get done. But the uh, thing that I'm doing is I'm going all out on the woodwork on this. Now, I haven't finished it yet. It's all rough right now. I'm going to walk around it so you can take a look. And, and I'm, I'm working on some of the details right now. There's my transformer right there and my MMC right there, and my Terry filter, and my spark gap is right in here, and my safety gap is right here, and this is gonna be a vacuum. We're gonna pull a vacuum with a vacuum cleaner out through to uh, cool the spark gap and to keep the ozone down in here. Now, I wanted to show you where I started on this thing. What I did was I started to do some drawings and sketches to kind of come up with what I had. So I knew I knew right away that I had a 15,000 volt transformer. That's this one right there. 15,000 volt transformer, 120 milliamp. It was sitting around here and I wanted to make a Tesla coil out of it. So I had to figure out, okay, I've got that, how do I start? So I found this MMC design chart from the Geek Group and it talks about the LTR caps the LTR capacitors, and it says right here, 60 hertz, not 50 hertz, 60 hertz, 15,000 volt, 120 milliamp, 15 kVA, 120 milliamp, desired value in microfarad is 0.0212 microfarads. And the actual value that you can get out of these capacitors, 14 capacitors, two strings of seven, to obtain 0.0214 microfarad. Now, using that criteria, then I can figure out what the primary looks like. So what I did was I figured out the, using this capacitance, I, I was going for around 170 kilohertz. That's just a value I picked um, to, for roughly the size of the Tesla coil that I wanted to build. And I ran three different scenarios, scenario one, two, and three, using number 23 wire, number 18 wire, and number 21 wire. Notice that uh, all of the kilohertz frequencies are roughly the same, 178, 182, 171. But the wire, the length of the secondary is much different. 20 inches with number 23, 36 inches with number 18, and 25 inches with number 21. And this, this uh, gave me this 178 uh, kilohertz, roughly gives me nine to 10 turns on the primary. So it sounds doable. So that's what I did. I came over here and this represents nine to 10 turns on the primary right here and gives me 25 inches of winding on the secondary. And that's what I, and, so, and, and I used, <clears throat> I used some other, uh, engineering stuff that was on the internet to try and figure out the diameter of the secondary and, and how, how big I kind of wanted this thing. There's a lot of cutting and fitting and, and, and deciding how big you want this and how, you know, how, how, how big you want the primary. A lot of it is, 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 is done by experience and talking with others and seeing what they have to offer. So anyway, this is, this is a culmination of my work. I'll give you some further information on this later, but I wanted to show you that there is a lot of homework that you need to do up front. Um, you know, making up drawings, 
Uh, this is how I developed my size of the toroid here. Um, it said that I needed to have roughly 22 picofarads in the design for the toroid itself, which comes down to around 20 inch toroid. Here's a uh, 15, uh, 15 to 30 inch diameter toroid. Um, I, I, was, I was working, I'm sorry, this is a, anyways, a 20 inch toroid is what I used. And, and these are, this is everything that I needed to do for my Terry filter. This is my original design criteria for the Tesla coil, which been, has been modified. And of course, I made up another drawing of, of how the Terry filter worked out with the resistors and the safety gap and the spark gap. And this drawing shows how it all goes together. I mean, <clears throat> you've got the downside transformer, the Terry filter in here feeds through the resistors into the safety gap, into the arc gap, and then onto the um, LC on the primary, which is the capacitor and the primary winding as a, as a series unit. This up here represents how to tune, how to figure out what the tuning frequency should be after I know the secondary frequency. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the, my, my oscilloscope right over here and my signal generator or I'm gonna use this as a secondary. This is my, this is my homemade Tesla coil tuner. I'll use all three of these in combination to figure out what the secondary frequency is with the toroid on it and what they simulated a wire that extends out around six feet to simulate that arc length to give me that frequency. And then I will tune the primary with this entire unit together minus the transformer so that I can figure out which tap I need to be on the primary to come up with that same exact frequency on the secondary. So that's about it for now. I'll get back to you guys later. See you now, bye-bye. All right, now that I have the Tesla coil complete, new toroid, which is here, secondary, primary, strike rail, woodwork. <clears throat> I'd like to zoom in here and show you a little bit about the uh, woodwork. This is all oak. Uh, there's eight pie pieces in an octagon shape. There's a black walnut. Uh, I had some laying around here, left over for some trim job that I did in my house. These are four by fours off of, uh, off of the skid, steel skid. This is some beach that I had. Um, down here we have some beach with some uh, quarter inch veneer plywood that is this whole base. <clears throat> Here's my vacuum set up on the, um, on the arc in the arc gap. I, I don't know if you can see that copper that's down in there. It's, you, can, you can see the tip of it down in there, right down in here, where my little finger's at. That copper's down in there, and then the other one is over in there, if you can see it. <clears throat> of course, this is my safety gap, and my Terry filter, my MMC uh, for the uh, capacitor bank, and a burned up 15,000 volt transformer. I was doing a first light test with it uh, about two days ago and the transformer quit operating and we have a short in the secondary somewhere. So I'm opting, opting to use my pole transformer which is sitting right over there. I have it hooked up. This is my little ground setup that I made. I can clip anything onto it. I can move around here a little bit, show you a little bit about the woodwork. I was trying to I wanted to make this thing look really, really nice. As you can see, I made a nice little uh, plug bracket um, so that it was uh, looks real nice. And as I walk around here, you can see where I have the the uh, pole transformer jury lashed in here. And I, you know, you can see the line that goes back to the uh, pole transformer back there. But then we go up to the upper surface here, and you can see some of the the, uh, the uh, woodwork in here and uh, I think you'll appreciate the, the cool finish here I did on the strike rail and uh, this is how I set my ground up. You can see the, the bolt comes all the way through right here. This is my ground and my ground actually comes down the inside leg of this thing right here. And we look we look around this thing the primary came out real nice. i using some fishing line. If you notice on here, there's some 50 pound fishing line that I used with some clear plexiglass or, or acrylic for standoffs on this thing. 
which made it real easy to build and uh, very easy to put together. And uh, my tap is right where that little X is right there for the, for the uh, primary uh, to be at the same resonant frequency as the secondary with that MMC back. So all I did was just to use a little clip, a little tiny alligator clip there, as you can see that. And we're gonna fire this thing up here and give you uh, a little uh, idea on what this thing looks like in operation. too bad huh it works pretty good even I'm impressed so uh, we'll talk to you guys later have a good one see you now bye bye